Hello and greetings from the European Parliament. We have a guest in the European Parliament, the Commissioner General from UNRWA joins us today. We are very thankful. Thank you. Uh, we as parliamentarians uh, have come up with a resolution as a shortcut of financial support by the US who withdrew a uh, big portion of their funds. Uh, we had a common agreement and a resolution cross-border the parties that we would like uh, that our countries, our member states, inject uh, their funding, but also doing diplomatic approaches in order to fill this gap. Has it been seen and how has it been perceived at UNRWA and for your work? Was it a su a support? Well, it's been very welcomed and uh, you deserve a lot of credit for this incredible cross-party mobilization because that's what it was about and we received it as an act of great solidarity but also as a message of political and financial engagement and commitment to UNRWA and that means a lot at a time where we faced great uncertainty in financial terms but even more importantly where Palestine refugees were wondering whether this was the beginning of a message that they were being overlooked and forgotten and you clearly clearly signaled that that's not the case and that was incredibly important. This was at the time before the Munich Security Conference happened. You're doing uh, international pitches, you're having conferences, you have uh, uh, situations where you fundraise. How is the situation for UNRWA? Where do you see yourself now? How long can you work on the budget you have? So we are currently facing the most serious and acute financial crisis ever in the history of our organization. and We've been in operation for over 68 years now. We had an initial shortfall of 146 million at the beginning of the year and then the US withdrew 300 million. So we were looking for 446 million in additional funding. That's a huge amount for any organization. Now the good news is that we have through two moments, uh, an international conference in Rome and then the Arab summit recently mobilized 200 million. And that's a very important set of first steps and 150 million out of these are from Qatar, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. So of course what we have seen is that uh, member states are mobilizing, they are coming forward. Now we still have a very big piece to close and you know in Gaza for example that could mean that a million people don't receive food assistance from uh, June onwards or it could mean that uh, students through our, our schools cannot return to the school year in say August or September. These things must be avoided because it would just add so much more risks to the region. You're also not only working in Gaza and the Palestine territories but also the refugees in the region. This day we had a conference and we continue to have this tomorrow on Syria. How did it go so far from your perception? What is important? How can the European Union contribute uh, a positive step forward? Well, the first thing is that such a conference is always important to underline and remind the world of the human cost of the catastrophic conflict in Syria. And I think here, of course, of millions of Syrians affected. But in the case of the focus of UNRWA, it's on the 440,000 Palestine refugees who remain inside Syria. And as we speak, the camp in Yarmouk, which is a southern neighborhood of Damascus, is again facing bombing, fighting and you know real tragic developments on the ground so it is very important for us to remind the world that Palestine refugees in Syria should not be forgotten and I think from the European Union and member states perspective of course any additional support that can come financially for our important programs in Syria would be highly valued. We do work on the next financial framework in the European Union and uh, Europe is a big donor to UNRWA um, what is your wish from the European Parliament, in particular on this financial framework? The first thing to say that is this year we had remarkable reactions from the European Union and from the Commission, front-loading the full 82 million that we receive, making a funding decision to make those 82 million confirmed for the next three years. These are all very important signals. Where the Parliament can be helpful is also to support, of course, in the attempt to see just simply our funding situation stabilized, to support initiatives to ensure that we don't have to go through these cycles of crisis every single year. Of course, my commitment is that we also work on reforms and savings inside UNRWA, and we have done that.
that very robustly, I can say it sincerely. So it has to be a two-way process. I, I would never expect donors to do the only side of the work. We have to also make our commitments. And the other side is that I do actively engage to diversify the funding base of UNRWA. But uh, as far as the European Union is concerned, if we can seek a stabilization and an upward move of the contributions over the coming years, that would, of course, be a major contribution to our work. Thank you very much. I will bring this also into our committees. Uh, thank you so much for your work. You thank stabilize you. our neighborhood region and you support millions of people for their daily needs. Uh, please look up the website of UNRWA and uh, encounter yourself even further. Thank you very much for taking the yes, time and pleasure. effort to thank come. Thank you. It's a and pleasure. let's keep working together very closely. We're very proud of the partnership. Thank you. Goodbye.